morning and welcome to SGBC Children's Worship. My name is Auntie Grace and I want to welcome all of you joining us worship this morning. Whether it is your first time or you have been joining us since the beginning of quarantine in March, I would like to welcome you. Now let's get our hearts ready and prepare ourselves for worship. Uh, the past week, God has done a lot of miraculous things in our family and in your family, I'm pretty sure. So I want you to come this morning to have a thanksgiving heart, um, to have the love for Christ, and also have your hearts ready so that we can listen to what God wanted to say to us this morning. So let's bow our head and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, uh, allowing us to come and worship you. Whether we are in our house, whether we are in church, whether we are in different places around the world, everybody come to worship you today. And we thank you for giving us this opportunity that we can tell you how much we love you and that we can sit and listen to your words. And we can come together, even though we're in different places, to worship you this morning. Help us to concentrate for the next 20 minutes. Help us to listen and help us to open our hearts so that your words can come in and allow us to respond to you. We thank you, Lord, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So boys and girls, we haven't sing the Pharaoh, Pharaoh song last week. So since we're still talking about Moses, we would like to continue singing this song. And this is a really fun song to sing. And I think by now you already know this song really well. So join me and sing the song Pharaoh, Pharaoh. It's talk about the whole story about the Israelite and Moses and it's really fun to sing, okay? Ready! is like filled with miracles and fun story. Now the next song I want to sing with you, a lot of you would probably already know, but you probably only always sing the first verse and not the second one. So I this morning I really want to sing the whole song, okay? And uh, when I started singing, you can join, join in. So guess what this song is, okay? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
Now, boys and girls, have you ever played the game Rock, Paper, Scissors? Rock, Paper, Scissors. Now, people all over the world play that game, no matter in what language. And I've hear it in so many different languages, people playing Rock, Paper, Scissors. And not only children, adults play Rock, Paper, Scissors too. Now, the great thing about this game is that it's equal opportunity. So anyone can win. There's really no, not much skill, okay? And any one of them can be a winner. Rock can be a winner, scissors can be a winner, or papers can be a winner. Now this morning, I have a real rock, papers, and scissors here. Now, if you're going to write a letter, a rock or a scissors could, couldn't be much help, but a piece of paper would, wouldn't it? If you want to cut your hair, a paper or a rock wouldn't help, but a pair of scissors would. Now, if you're really thirsty and need a drink of water, a piece of paper or a pair of scissors wouldn't be much help, but a rock might be exactly what you need. What? Some of you are looking at Auntie Grace like, are you crazy? Don't you think that a rock would help if you need a drink of water? Is that serious, Auntie Grace? How is rock going to serve solve your problem of being thirsty? Now, in our Bible story today, that's exactly what happened. So I want you all to take your Bible out. Now, remember, we have to have your Bible ready before we start worship, okay? So if you don't have it, go look for it now. Quick, quick, quick. I'll give you 10 seconds, okay? Ready? Okay. So today's story is in Exodus chapter 17. So Exodus is the second book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus. Okay. So turn to Exodus and look for big number 17. And then we're going to look at the whole chapter. It's not too long, but it's a really good story. Okay. So Exodus chapter 17. Now Moses was the leader of the people of Israel. He was leading them from Egypt to a land where God would give to them. That land was the most wonderful piece of land that they can live in. So they were wandering through the desert and people were getting thirsty. They began to grumble and complain to Moses. We are dying, they said. Our children are dying. Our cattles are dying. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die out here in the desert? They were angry and they were grumbling. Now Moses, after he heard that, he went into his tent and fell on his knees before God. This is what Moses asked God. What should I do? Moses prayed. There is no water in the desert and the people are thirsty and they are ready to kill me. Now God answered Moses and said to him, take your shepherd's staff and walk ahead of the people. I will meet you by the rock at Mount Sinai. When you come to the rock, strike it with your staff and then water will flow out from the rock and the people will have plenty, water, plenty of water to drink. So Moses did exactly what God told him to do. Guess what happened? When he strike on the rock, he got water from it. It flows out of it. Now today's story has four main characters. Moses, the Israelites, God, and the rock. Now which characters do you think is most similar to us? Obviously not God. I don't think we're like the rock. 
Definitely not Moses. We're not like Moses either. Hmm, so let me think. Who do you think we are most like? Let's see. Have you ever got grumpy or even angry when you don't get what you want? Or have you ever complained or even threw a temper tantrum because you're too thirsty or too tired? Now, I have done both, and I'm pretty sure a lot of kids have done it, and I've seen many of them done it when they're tired and thirsty. Even though it seems like we are only angry maybe at our mom and dad or at something that makes us really tired and grumpy, just like the Israelite being angry at Moses. But their anger and our anger actually is directed towards God because God is in control of everything. Now the Israelite really behave like grumpy crybabies. Actually, they were doing much worse than grumbling. They actually want to kill Moses. In reality, they were not just rebelling, rebelling against Moses but they were actually rebelling against God. So let me ask you, those grumpy crybaby, what do you think God should do to them? Should he let the Israelite in the desert and let them just die of thirst? Or should God send fire down and punish the Israelite for being rebellious? Or should God rain down freezies, juice boxes and ice cream so that the Israelite can have all the goodies they can eat and drink. What do you think? Now, God actually has every right to strike the people for complaining. But instead, God called Moses to go ahead of the people and bring the staff that he has previously used that do miraculous things against Pharaoh. Then God told Moses to use his staff to strike a rock on which God is standing. When Moses struck the rock, it was as if the rock was taking the punishment for the sin of the Israelite. But what flows out from that punishment was a miracle of mercy. Life-saving water actually comes out from the rock in the middle of the desert. Now let's look at our Bible verse for today. It is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. This is what the Bible said. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know something about our people who lived long ago. They were all led by the cloud. They all walked through the Red Sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and they all drank the same spiritual water. They drank from the spiritual rock that went with them. That rock was Christ. Wow, the Bible actually in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 10, verse 4, the Bible actually told us that the rock actually represents Jesus Christ. Now the rock bore the brunt of the blow by the hand of Moses for the sins of the Israelite. Jesus Christ on the cross bore the brunt of the blow of our sins when God poured out all the punishment on him. The rock brought the Israelite blessings of water and life in the middle of the desert. And the cross brought us the water of the Spirit poured out onto all sinners so that they can have eternal life. Isn't that amazing? God has give us, given us a miraculous pictures in this story of Jesus. It is Jesus who took the punishment for our sins and from the beating and the striking that Jesus took, it flows out mercy and everlasting life. So boys and girls, let's, let me ask you, do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Do you believe that Jesus was being striked and beaten up because of us who deserve the punishment, but he took all our punishment so that we can have everlasting life. Now, if you do, and if you want to accept Jesus as your personal savior, do um, let us know and maybe talk to your parents and ask them to help you to pray to God and tell God that you want Jesus to be your personal savior too. So next time when we are in difficult situation, remember this Bible story. 
Remember not to be like the Israelite, okay? Try not to complain about and grumble and, you know, being angry at what we don't have. But instead, be thankful for what we do have. So let's bow our head and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this Bible story. Even though it happens a long time ago, it actually teaches us how to not be grumble, but be thankful. When we face impossible situations, when we face difficulty, like when we are um, going back to school and things are not like before, or when we have to stay home and won't be able to go out and see our friends, or even at school, we won't be able to play with our friends. Help us to remember that, God, you are always good to us. And help us to always be thankful, no matter what situation. God, we thank you, because you are such a loving God. Even though we sin against you, you still love us. And you took all the punishment that we deserve, and take it so that we can have eternal life. We thank you, God. We thank you, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, boys and girls, I hope you like this story, and I hope you remember it, okay? So let's do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So boys and girls, I hope when we have difficulty, not only that we remember to be thankful, but we can also pray to God and ask God to help us, okay? So when you're going back to school, I pray that God will protect you, your teachers, your classmates, and your family, okay? Do remember to always wash your hands, wear your mask, don't touch it all the time, and keep a distance. And if you are sick or if you, your friends are sick, stay away from each other, stay at home so that you don't spread the germs to other people. And I do pray for all of you to be safe every day from school. So hopefully I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.